Brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child. Children will rise against their parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by everyone because of my name, but the one who perseveres to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. Truly I tell you, you will not reach all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. Matthew chapter 10, verses 21 and 23. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, welcome back to the Legion of Michael podcast, and thank you. Thank you for being here, and thank you for all that you do to support the show. Remember, well, well, what should I remember, Paul? I know, you're like, I know, I know. I should go to legionofmichael.com and sign up for the distance learning program. I should sign up for the church security program at legionofmichael.com. That's what I should do. Yes, you should do that. Yes, you should. Yes, indeed. All right. Today's topic, you will be hated by man. And this is a difficult one. And, well, why is it difficult? It's difficult because humans, by their very nature, don't want to be hated, right? You don't want people to hate you. You want people to like you. You want people to appreciate what you say and what you do, and the last thing you want is for people not to like you. How many have of you have been in a position where you were on socialist media, fill in the blank, whatever it is, the Twitter or Insta garbage or fascist book or, or whatever, and uh, you posted something that you were very proud of, whatever it happened to be. I don't know. Maybe it was a cake that you baked or maybe it was a – a table that you refinished, maybe it was your garden, maybe it was whatever. It doesn't matter. You're very proud of that thing. And then some RIA, uh, random internet a-hole, just came along and disparaged it, said something nasty about it. How'd that make you feel? Now, it should have made you feel nothing, but as a human... It probably didn't make you feel nothing. It probably made you angry. It probably annoyed you. You were probably upset because someone out there didn't like what you had to say, what you had to show, what have you. Now, when we sit down calmly and rationally and we think about it, we say, well, yeah, the the approval of strangers is really not something that we should be craving. And from a psychological standpoint, we really uh, do not need, or nor should we be a seeking the approval of random strangers. If random strangers don't like what we say and what we do, it shouldn't affect us. But it does, doesn't it? That's why it's best often to limit your access or limit your, uh, your time on socialist media. You say, what does that have to do with the lesson? Well, if man, if men, if humans can't stand it when a random internet a-hole, when an RIA, when some stranger doesn't agree with them, doesn't like what they say, says mean things about them, how are they going to deal with actual people in their real life doing the same thing? How are they going to deal with the betrayal of a brother or a father or a mother or a child or, you know, a good friend or a relative or whatever? How are they going to deal with that? You're like, wow, I, yeah, exactly, exactly. Christ told us, he said, and this is strange. Now, I'm going to go ahead and put a pause there and go back a little bit. When I was growing up, I was growing up in the United States of America. Our family went to a, uh, well, we went to a couple of different churches as we moved around when I was a kid, but they were good, faithful houses of worship. 
And uh, there were good, I believe, you know, looking back now, uh, that there were good people in those churches. And growing up, it would have never occurred to me that people in the United States of America, that American citizens would deliberately attack the church, that they would deliberately attack Christians, that they would deliberately persecute Christians. Now, that was when I was a kid. You know, I grew up in the 70s and 80s, and that's when the Iron Curtain was in place. Uh, If you don't know what the Iron Curtain is, it's because you're a Gen Z and you learn nothing in school. But the Iron Curtain was the wall, was a euphemism for the wall built around the Soviet Union and communist China. And in those countries, it was punishable by prison and or execution to possess a Bible, to distribute a Bible, to go to church, to profess that anyone other than the state was the supreme being, right? Uh, there were there were people in the so, former Soviet Union who were persecuted for having a Bible, reading a Bible, having church services and so forth. That was forbidden in communist China, forbidden. You go to jail, you go to a prison camp, and maybe you're never seen again. And I knew that, and I was aware of that when I was a child and when I was in my teens, but I, would, I could never possibly have imagined that that would happen within the borders of the United States of America. That in my country, Christians and the Christian faith and the church would be persecuted openly, not just by zealots, not just by minions of Satan, but by people in the government of the United States of America. How do we deal with that? How do we deal with it? In in the book of Matthew, going back to Matthew, chapter 24, verses 4 to 14. Let me go ahead and read that. And Jesus, and Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and they will mislead many people. And you will be hearing of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for those things must take place, but that is not yet the end. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famine and earthquakes in various places. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pains. He goes on to say, Then they will hand you over to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. And at that time, many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will rise up and mislead many people. And because lawlessness is increased, most people's love will become cold. But the one who endures to the end is the one who will be saved. The gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. Matthew 24, 4-14. We need to be prepared. We need to be mentally prepared. Now, I don't believe that Christ wants us to just go out and throw ourselves on the sword. I don't believe he wants us to go out and uh, stand in front of a bus and get run over. I believe he wants us to be bold. He wants us to be fearless. He wants us to stand up for our faith. He wants us to protect our families and our children. He wants us to stand up and protect those who cannot protect themselves. But we have to be mentally prepared for people to hate us. We have to be mentally prepared for people that are in the United States government to betray Christians, to persecute Christians, to jail Christians. You say, Paul, come on, man. This is, uh, this is the United States. It doesn't happen. One nation under God. It's already happening. I wrote an entire book called The Intolerant Christian where we detailed the government persecution of Christians for their faith. Do you believe that that's going to let up anytime soon? Look at who we have in charge of our nation. We have minions of Satan 
in the White House. We have minions of Satan. And you will know them by the fruits that they bear. People say, oh, you can't say that. I say that because I see what they do. I see the fruit that they bear. A good tree will not bear bad fruit, and a bad tree will not bear good fruit. And the bad, evil, wicked men and women in Washington, D.C. are bearing wicked, evil fruit. They cheerlead for sodomites. They cheerlead for infanticide. I mean, what else do you need to know? You, you, have, you have people in government cheerleading for sodomy for sinfulness, for sinful behavior. We have them screaming for the right, supposedly. They say that they have the right to murder innocent children because those children are inconvenient. Those are children of God that they're murdering. You will be hated by men for your beliefs. When I was growing up, when I was going to catechism, I read this, and I thought, yes, I... That's something that happens in communist countries. That's something that happens in communist China, you know, in the Soviet Union. That, you know, uh, I can see that happening in Cambodia. You know, I can't see that. I could not, as a teenager, see that happening in my own country. And here we are just a couple of generations later, you know, 20, 30 years later, and within the borders of the United States, we have tolerated and we allow the government to persecute Christians in the name of supposed fairness or equality or whatever that means. You have to be prepared. You need to ask yourself this hard question. If you cannot deal with someone on the Internet disliking a post, uh, if, if you can't deal with that, if you order your life so that no one is ever well me, mad at you or everyone likes everything you say, then you're you're not prepared. How are you going to be prepared when those who you cared about betray you? How do you think Christ felt? He came to save the people of Israel. He was the one the 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 Messiah that had been prophesied about for hundreds of years. There he is. He said, Here I am. And what did they do? They betrayed him. One of his own disciples betrayed him. His people betrayed him. They said, give us Barabbas. They said, give us Barabbas. He was killed by democracy. Christ was murdered by democracy. So remember that when people, you hear people spouting off about derp, derp, and democracy. So yeah, democracy was, is what killed Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, are you prepared? Are you prepared to deal with betrayal? Are you prepared for those that you care about to betray you? For family and friends to hate you because you hold true to the word of God? You follow his teachings. You follow his instructions. You follow the rules. They're not difficult. They're in the book. The rules aren't difficult. They're easy to follow. They're easy to follow. And you just you follow those thinking that your friends, neighbors, relatives, you know, your your children, you're thinking, yeah, they'll that's easy to understand. It's not difficult. How are you gonna deal with that? Dealing with uh no enemies or people who don't want enemies, they want everyone to love them. My friend James Yeager if you pay attention to student of the gun or anything we do, you know that, that uh, we lost him last week. He passed away. He said, show me a man with no enemies, and I will show you a man with no accomplishments. Standing up for what is right will never be popular. Friends come and go, but enemies accumulate. Indeed. Indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to be prepared to deal with it. I want you to be mentally prepared to deal with it. I want you to remember 
that we were warned that Christ told us. So don't act surprised. Don't act surprised when the evil men who worship Satan, when people who are more concerned with the way of man in the world, when they turn on you, don't act surprised. Be ready. Be prepared. Steal your heart. Read your Bible. Say your prayers. I'm serious. And what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and say the warrior's prayer. Lord, I come before you seeking the strength and the skill to overcome my enemies. Grant me, I pray, the wisdom to recognize evil, the courage to confront it, and the strength to destroy it. In Jesus' name I pray this. Amen.